I don't want to call him the navigator, but he operated the, the radar. Oh, no, he operated the radar. So he, he was... Uh, and they put me with a gun. <laughs> Artillery. I think he was... A, he wasn't an officer. No, no, I never... He know. went as far as he could go without being an officer. You, you can't um, be an officer unless you're a college graduate. Well, he was a college graduate. Oh, he was a college graduate and he wasn't an officer? Yeah. Oh, I don't know how that happened. Well, he, he thinks he knows how that happened. He thinks he knows how it happened? Yeah. Usually when you're a college graduate, you become an officer. Um, That's the rule. He, he I always, wasn't a college graduate. He always claimed that... I didn't even graduate was, high school. He had a captain who was very anti-Semitic. Um, and that was his claim. He had very, our last name, his last name was Goldberg. So it was real obvious he was, he was Jewish. He was Jewish, right. Fleischer, to be Jewish or to be German. <laughs> so, anyways, you ready? Yep, yeah, we're o set. Okay, so, I guess uh, to start off, if you could, you could just state your name. Uh, my um, name is Irving Fleischer. I live at 826 Marlowe Road, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08003. And to get just a little bit of background. I am a second World War veteran. I enlisted at the age uh, prior to becoming 18, which was in 19, at the end of 1943. And uh, well, where, did, where were you? Where'd you grow up? I I grew up in uh, Philadelphia, uh, South Philadelphia. Uh, uh, I think it was four sixteen Cancel Street or something like that. It was on Cancel Street, the four hundred block of Cancel Street. And uh, uh, I lived there with uh, my parents. My parents had uh, six children. I was one of six. Where'd you fall within the age range of the six? I'm the oldest. So I was the oldest of the six children. And uh, uh, my father never made very much money, so I, I went to work at a young age to help my mother uh, with uh, finances. So at 18, had you finished high school? No, no. I went to... I went to work when I was 16 and a half, and I worked in a glove factory, and then at 17, I worked in a machine shop. Uh, I worked in a machine shop because I took machine shop in school. And uh, after getting that machine shop experience, uh, by the time I was 18, I went into the service, but when I was uh, when I was a machine, when I worked in a machine shop, uh, I was making like three times the amount of money my father was making. So. Uh, so were you drafted into the service, or no? I, I I joined because I wanted to be in the navy, and so I joined for four years. Uh, but very strangely, when the war ended. They sort of had too many people there and just threw me out also. So, uh, uh, so, so your goal was to stay in the Navy? No, my, my goal was to stay in the Navy, but my, my goal basically was to uh, uh, join the Navy. To, if I'm going to be in a war, I'd rather be in the Navy than be in the Army or in the Air Force or anything else. That was my selection. That's where I wanted to be. That's the service I wanted to be in. Anyway, uh, uh, I went through, uh, you, you had uh, a month or two where they had to train you. So I went through training and everything else. And then they, they, they assigned me to a ship, an LSD, which is a landing ship dock. Now, uh, unbeknown to me, that was a brand new ship. They were still building it when they assigned me to it, which means that it hasn't passed 
maneuvers or anything like that, and it hasn't passed any tests. So on the landing ship dock, uh, the, the front part of it is built like a regular ship. It has 20 millimeters and a five Five millimeter gun. Uh, uh, and the uh, uh, the, perp the purpose of the ship was to take small craft to wherever the uh, wh wherever the government was going to invade. And a small craft the back of the ship would drop down because it was like a big bathtub, the back of the ship. The back of the ship drops back and the small craft with, with uh, soldiers uh, aboard it come, uh, get on a small craft and then they go to the, to the island or wherever, whatever country they're, they're supposed to invade. So that was a new type of ship. Uh, so you actually had the, the small craft, the landing craft, on your, yeah. your now, ship. Which, that, that was different than an LST. An LST also carried soldiers, but they carried the soldiers right aboard the ship itself. And the front of the ship dropped down. So there was a difference between an LST and an LSD. Well, I'm familiar with the LSTs. I'm not familiar with the LSDs. Right. So you know an L what an LSD sure, is. Sure, the front drops, okay, so the front drops down. So you can, you can picture now the back of the ship dropping down and, the, and out of the back of the ship comes these other smaller vessels and there the, the vessels go with the soldiers go towards land. Uh, so that was the object and that was, uh, I think that was a new type of ship. Uh, so what was your role on board? Uh, the, the first... Uh, I, in the beginning, I was a seaman, so I was uh, I either uh, I was on a 20 millimeter guns, and uh, I decided well uh, I wanted to be since I had experience uh, with machinery and equipment, I, I and I knew uh, I had some electrical background. Uh, they put me down that. I went into the electrical group, which worked below decks. So in the beginning, I was above decks. Then later on, I was below decks. And when I worked below decks, uh, uh, one of the activities was, uh, in the beginning, was to load the five inch millimeter guns. And then later on, I got transferred to another section, and I, I was assigned to help the electrician. So I became like helper. So this was all part of my training, but the main thing is the ship, when uh, it took a while before the ship was ready to go out on maneuvers. In other words, everybody was sent home and they would come back, you'd send you home again until the ship was ready to go. When the ship was ready to go, this took a good six, eight months. Wow. Where, so, where was the ship located? Norfolk. Finally, the ship went out on maneuvers, and it failed maneuvers, which meant that it had to come back to be fixed. Okay, then they fixed it. You, you went home again until they fixed it. Then you came back to the ship. So this was all... A, a, a waiting period that I was going through. Then when we were ready, they said, okay, we're on our way to Germany. So the ship was on its way to Germany. Do you remember what, what date, approximately? Uh, I would say we were on our way to Germany, I would say about maybe a week before they, uh, uh, before they uh, uh, surrendered. So you're in 45 already? Right. So we're already in 45, and, and we're on our way there, and we almost reach, uh, I think the first stop was supposed to be England. Before we get there, we get a notification to turn around, the war is over, 
turned around, and now we're to go on our way to uh, to Japan, and we had to go through the canals. So uh, we go all the way back. We go through the canals. This was a very interesting experience with them. Okay. So this is the Panama Canal. This is the Panama Canal. So now we're in the Panama Canal. We're going in and out. We finally get to the Panama Panama Canal. We're on our way to Germany now. So now, I mean to Japan. Excuse me. We're on our way to Japan. So we're stopping at the islands first. And we stop at these at a, at a number of these islands and we continue on going towards Japan. Do you remember any of the islands that you stopped at? I don't remember. Oh, it's okay. Uh, so finally, we get to, uh, I think it's, we're almost near Japan. Uh, and, or, uh, to, to the group that was supposed to go to Japan in okay. that area. And Maybe all, the Philippines? Yeah, or the Philippines. Uh, I think it was the Philippines. We, we probably had to, to get to, to the Philippines with a group there and go with that group to Japan. And all of a sudden, we get a notification that the war is over. And uh, the next thing I know is that the war is over, and now they're starting to get rid of millions of sailors that were in the, in the service. So let me ask you, when, when you heard that the war was over, and, and your boatmates heard that the war was over, were, were you, I'm sure you were excited we and were happy. We were excited about it. We were happy. But you see, I thought I had another year and three months to go, something like that to finish my, my time, but that's not how it worked. They told me that I would have to uh, join the, uh, the reserves with the active reserves, and I said, I don't want to be in the active reserves, because I didn't want to have to leave house, leave home, and come back and forth. So I figured, I don't want to be in the active reserves. They said, okay, you'll be in any active reserves. And that's, that's how it ended the whole thing. But theoretically, had I been on any other ship but this LSD, which they didn't need anymore, because they got rid of practically everybody on the ship, they didn't need the LSD, so I was able to get out. Had I been on any other ship but an LSD, I would have had to serve my year and a half to complete my time. So did the did the ship sail sail home? The ship went home. They took the ship to, the ship turned around and they brought it right back. They brought it right back. To Norfolk? Or to the they West brought, Coast? They brought it right back to Norfolk and we went through the canal again. And you were discharged in Norfolk? So basically, you spent the whole time on on shipboard sailing. Shipboard sailing. That's what the whole thing was. I said I was lucky to be on the right ship. Little did I realize, upset with it because it was always waiting for the ship to be ready for. Uh, oh, incidentally, that we did go out and we did go when the ship was done. We did fire at targets when on the 20 millimeters. I was shooting up in the, at, at targets up in the, in the air. So I was getting training how to use that gun. So the 20 millimeter is an anti-aircraft gun. Is, it, yeah. is that right? Yeah. So I was, I was getting training on that. So were, were you the actual gunner? I was, I was a gunner. That's when I was a seaman. So you you would train as you would as you would sail, or did you train when you got to certain islands? Oh no no, we did we did our training before the ship before that ship went out. Okay. That was part of the the ships. In other words, a new ship. 
they had to make sure that the ship, no, I forgot to tell you one other thing. We ran into a tycoon. This is the most important part. I was almost Typhoon. killed. <laughs> I almost, I, I'm almost, well, I'm not almost, to get here. We, when the ship was on its way to, to, uh, to, to Germany, we ran into a head on to a, a, a tycoon. The back of the ship was like a big bathtub. We couldn't get the water out fast enough. So what'd you do? Was, well, so the executive officer says, let's abandon ship. So he says, abandon ships. So everybody gets ready to abandon ship. I figured I'm not gonna go anywhere. I'm just gonna hang around here. But I still had to put my gear on to abandon ship because I'm told to abandon ship. Then we're going because we can't get the water out fast enough. We had bilges, and the bilges weren't, uh, I don't know why it wasn't, I said it's a new ship, right? It couldn't take the water out fast enough that was coming. The waves were like 20, 30 feet in the so air. The pumps weren't the pumps, doing their job. The pumps weren't doing the job that it should do. So then the captain, just the captain took and reversed that order and said, keep bilging bilging it out. And you made it, obviously. We made it. But just think, if the executive officer, if, 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 the, if the captain had gone along with what the executive officer wanted to do, we'd have all jumped off, off the ship and we'd have all died. Because who's going, what are you going to do with 20, 30 foot waves? So was the ship sailing on its yeah. own or were you part of a group? At that point, we're part of a group. Do we have to only small crafts? We we'd had about maybe uh, twenty uh, small crafts going in the water. How many people do you think would make it uh, with these small crafts in the water with twenty to thirty foot foot high waves? Not many, I'm okay. probably not many. So I'm saying it was a crazy situation. The whole thing was crazy. Go again and out, and, and here I am. <laughs> So, so can you tell us any anything that you came away from in in your service uh, that really sticks in your mind? You know? Well, the only thing that sticks in my mind is that uh, when we went to these islands, uh, we were advised not to go into the uh, uh, into the jungle. We were advised to stay close to the shore. Uh, because they were afraid that there were a lot of snipers there. Oh, so these islands weren't necessarily completely secure. No, it's secure. So that was very interesting going over there, and I don't remember too much about it, but I remember being on the islands, and they let you they let you off in groups, and they wanted you back at a certain time, and. Uh, We'd all get back, back uh, on a small craft, and it, it would take us back to the ship. So it was sort of like a, a day. Uh, it was off the ship. And I don't know the purpose of us going on the island. Uh, I know there, there were like soldiers and other other people on these islands besides us. But uh, I was only 18. I didn't know. So did you enjoy your, your couple of years in the service? Well, the two and a half years or so, or two and three quarter years that I was there, yeah. It was enjoyable. Are you still in touch with any of the guys that you sailed with? Or, uh, or were you there was two being? people. There was two people that I was very friendly with. And uh, when I got out, I, was, I would write to them and you know, correspond with them. But uh, that lasted maybe about maybe three, four years, and then that stopped. Were there, there were, so there were no reunions of, of I never went to any reunion. So after after you got home, what what did you do? Oh, uh, after I got home, uh, I decided that I wanted to get my uh, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to graduate college. Uh, then I wanted to graduate high school, so I went to Temple University. I think I went there for six months, and I got my my degree, and then I continued on, and I got uh, I got a, 
an associate degree there in engineering, and then uh, I went to, to another school, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the school that I went to. Uh, I went to another school to get my, uh, my bachelor's. I, uh, when I went to Temple, I had an associate mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and uh, another type of engineering. I had a lot of credits here. When I went to Temple, I had like 200 credits. I put a lot of time in there. But they weren't giving out degrees at that point. So all I had was a lot of credits. And I converted this over and just went to another school, which I was able to get my degree. And then I also had gone to the uh, University of uh, What other university? I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, I think it was uh, Penn State, but I took education there. And I got, a, I did about uh, uh, a couple years of work in education, so I got, I got a lot of education background. While I was, uh, I went to work for the federal government. I took a lot of courses in the federal government, and uh, I got a lot of background as far as educate, as far as training people. Because that was one of my jobs to train people. So when I worked for the federal government, uh, I would go out and uh, uh, we built. Uh, uh, the first thing that I did with them was uh, uh, I worked for the uh, Navy Crane Center. Do you want to hear about that Navy Crane Center? Sure. I worked for the Navy Crane Center, and the Navy Crane Center, uh, they that was new. And the fellow there that I worked for. He was like uh, at GS-12 like I was. And uh, he's the one that hired me. And he hired me as a temporary employee since they weren't hiring permanent employees. Is this at the Navy Yard? This is at the Navy Yard. So he's a 12. And instead of taking care of me, I'm, I'm doing all the work for him and helping him with the program and bringing it, going to Washington to bring the money back for him he just took care of his buddies and didn't take care of me, which means I couldn't get my 13. You gotta remember, I went in as a 12 and I left as a 12, except I went in as a 12, step one 12 when I left as a 12, step 12, 10. But here I had, all this, I was Jewish. So therefore, all his friends moved to the 13th position and he says, uh, he did something to me that, that upset me very much. He asked me to do something which was illegal. He needed money to spend for something. He had me write a requisition, which was wrong. So he had me write a requisition. Ah, that's wrong to make somebody do requisitions for you and sign my name. So when the guy that was in charge of that department looked at me, he says, he says look, he says, you can't make, you can't, you can't order this stuff here because you don't have the money in there for it, to, to buy it. He says, besides that, you, you're not entitled to do that. Who gave you permission to do that? I says, my supervisor. So he calls my supervisor on the phone. My supervisor says, no, he says, he never told me to do it. So that was marked against me. And, uh, but he, uh, he knew there was something wrong. Somehow it got washed away. But that's when I left him. I said to myself, this guy's a bum. So you got, you got out of the... Uh... I got out of the uh, working for uh, the Navy Crane Center. And then I joined Northern Division. And that's when I moved into another department, which was basically engineers like myself. So this is still working for the, gov for the government. government. But now Northern Division took care of all the other activities. We was a central agent. And they was an agent that trained people to do their job. So now I'm training people to do engineering. And uh, I, I stayed with them for a long time. So how did you end up in Cherry Hill? Oh. Uh, I, my, my, my 
Uh, when I looked, when I came out of the service, uh, my parents didn't have any money, so I had to use my uh, the money that I got uh, from the Navy to help them buy a house. So the money that I got, so the, the Navy helped my parents buy the house because I signed for it. And you obviously bought the house in Cherry Hill. No, no, it was, no? It was bought in Philadelphia, where my mother was, with my father. Okay. Then I met my wife at a dance. And her wife and her father had a. Uh, uh, right now, I w right now the type of work I was doing, I was doing engineering work. And I was going to school, but I was doing engineering work. Uh, on my own, working for different companies. So uh, her, uh, I went to the stance, and her. Uh, she was went aside there. She's a young girl, pretty young girl. And I went to her and I said to myself, should I dance with her or shouldn't I dance with her? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I figured, okay, I'll go over and ask her for a dance. <laughs> so I go over and I asked her for a dance. Okay. She had come with her friends. So she, she danced with me and we danced a few times. And then, uh, she gave me her phone number, uh, you know, when the night was over, because I danced, I spent, the, I spent the night with her dancing. Uh, it was, it was at a synagogue. I was dancing at a, it was a synagogue dance. So, then uh, uh, I uh, contacted her and I took her out, and I had a car, because my brother and I both bought a car, so he had the car half the time, and I had the car the other half the time. So when I had the car, I, I would, would take her out to dance. But the strange thing happened. Her father says to me, he says, well, he says, don't worry. He says, when I told when I told his daughter one weekend that I couldn't take her out, he says, he told his daughter, don't worry about it. Just tell him to come in, he'll take my car. I was the only boy that he ever gave his car to. Wouldn't trust anyone with his car. So he gave me. I the wouldn't car. either. <laughs> yeah, if you wanted to get rid of your door, you'd give, you'd give the car away. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I didn't know. What, I didn't know what was going through his mind. So I took her to the movies. I took her. I brought her home, and then I would take the bus home from his house, and then uh, uh, we uh, we got. I was with her for uh, oh about I go with her for about six months, and then uh, I, asked, I, I asked her if she wanted to get married, and she said yes. And her parents uh, basically uh, paid for the wedding. I paid for the other half because my parents had no money. I the one that had no money because I said I was worked and made money. So what year did you get married? <laughs> oh, I thought that'd be an easy one. Uh, okay, one second. 1926. Uh, I think it was 1934. No, it had to be later. Than it was after the war, right? It was after the war. One second. 1926. Okay, 1926 is. 20 years later, it's 1946, right. okay. okay. 1946 is 20 years later. Uh, I said about 1952. So did you have kids? Yeah, I had two children in about 1956. 56 and 1958. Uh, so, so getting back to, just to, to kind of wrap up your, your military history, um, you know, was, so you don't, you don't stay in touch with any, any of the guys anymore. Do you know what ever happened to the ship? 
When it came back, they just... No, 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 it went out again. It went out for other wars. But I... Do you remember I told you the, the ship, uh, everyone on the ship was discharged? Right. So you sort of lost contact. A new group must have gone on that ship because that ship was used for later wars. Other wars that they had. Korea, I, I yeah. assume. That, that was, that, that, that ship was still used. Right. But I never understood why they didn't, why they just threw me out. But I guess that was what they were doing. That there were a been. lot of guys that, you know, the war was over. The war was over, yeah. So. Anyway, you, you, you have a synopsis of, uh, of uh, what I was talking about. And, uh, yeah, that I was, else. that was great. That was great. That's, that's what we're looking for. Right. It, uh, it, uh, I was aboard a, I was lucky. I got aboard a brand new ship that failed maneuvers. That wasn't <laughs> built on time. Had I been aboard any other ship in two months, I would have been over in Germany. So I'd have been in Germany at the beginning of 1944. And had the ship gone, been there in 1944, I'm sure it would have been involved with the invasion. Right. Being had the, the ship, type of ship it was. Had the, yeah, right. Had the ship been done in time, first of all, had the ship been completed before I before I was ready to go aboard it. And when I went aboard it, or had it been done before, a year before, then I got on a ship, it would have automatically gone over there. Like you say, within within two months I'd have been over there. Right. That was crazy. So did you feel like you missed out? No, I don't feel like I missed anything. I, I enjoyed my time in the service and uh, saw the world, I, I, look, when I came back, the ship came back, don't forget, I was on, uh, I was in California, because the ship, you know, when the ship went on the west coast there, I stopped in California and some of the ports over there. Uh -huh. That was on the way back we did that. So I mean, It was uh, it was very interesting uh, to see the world. As an eighteen year old, I'm sure. As an eighteen years old, as eighteen years old, it was very interesting to see the world. What eighteen year old gets a chance to see the world like that? Unless your parents send you all over. Your right. parents have a lot of money to send you all over. Well, I appreciate it. It was great. Okay, now, do you want me to get a picture of myself, or uh, you don't need it? Um, I can I can take a picture with. Because if you need a picture, I will make a point of bringing the picture, making a copy of it, and bringing it in. That'd be great if we. Could yeah, that would be wonderful. Okay, so I'll bring you it. Still have your uniform. <laughs> I wouldn't fit in it anyway. I, <laughs> I mean, I was half the size I am now. My dad used to talk about how he got home and his mother took all his stuff and sold it all. Oh, really? Yeah. Gee, you, you that, know, you, he, he never got over that. Never got over it. It pissed him off the I entire life. I smuggled the gun back with me, but I don't know whatever happened to it. Uh -oh. I brought it to my, uh, I know you weren't allowed to do that. I, I disassembled it completely. It was, a lot, it was in about 50 different parts. And I smuggled it back. In uh, parts? Yeah. And uh, yes. when I got home, I played around with fixing it up. But I don't I, I never did anything with it. It, uh, it, good. it was in the old house. <laughs> it, it was a big rifle. Oh, okay. It was okay. a big rifle, wasn't it? It wasn't a little handgun. It was a big rifle. 
with a bayonet on the end and everything else. This is a, Jap a Japanese rifle? Japanese, yeah. Did you find it or did you buy it from? Uh... I found it, and, and, and I disassembled. And I was, I was going to keep it as a souvenir. Sure. <laughs> but you know, when you're you're 20 years old, you, you don't. I know. Play in the head like that. So somewhere, someone got the gun. Who knows what they did with it? But it was a big rifle. You never see anyone out of, out of, out of, outside with a big. It wasn't like a rifle that, like the the police use. They have a rifle that might be this big. That was it. They were these big ones. Uh huh. Okay. I guess. Do you guys have any questions? Okay. We're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so I'll, now, I showed you this over here. Did you did you want any of it?